you get your hopes up and start saying what you want, not what you're willing to settle for or not what you've been having or not what you don't want. Amen? And start decreeing things that you want established unto you. Why? Because your spirit is so strong. I mean, it is phenomenal. It, why? It's got a direct connection with God. God's life and his power pours through that connection with your spirit into your spirit. And because of that, you have access to all power. You have access to everything that God is and has. Why? Because we're joint heirs with Christ. And yet, we're the ones that turn the faucet down. Well, I'll just settle for this. Well, you know, it'll probably be like this. Well, you know, every, whatever comes around, I seem to catch it. Well, you know, quit catching. Let it go. Amen? And start saying what you want. Now, Again, this is about the word of a king. You're a king. You can decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you. Now, uh, let's see. Yeah, in Psalm 78, verse 12, it says, Marvelous things did he in the sight of their fathers. Now, the he here is God. In the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan, he divided the sea. God divided the sea. Is that right? That's right. But God told Moses, what's in your hand? It's the rod, okay? Stretch forth your hand and part the sea. So if you go back to Exodus, it says Moses parted the sea. But here in Psalm, it says that God parted the sea. Well, which is it? Both. Why? Working in conjunction. If you go into the Bible, and this is one of the things I loved about Charles Finney because he brought these things out in his uh, systematic theology, that salvation is accredited to God Many times in the Bible, God saved us. He, Jesus came and died for us so he could save us. And by his blood, he saved us. And there's all these scriptures, I mean, hundreds of scriptures about God saving us. But there are also scriptures where men are told to save themselves. Save yourselves from this untoward generation is what Peter said. And so now which is it? Do we save ourselves or does God save us? Well, guess what? God can't save you without your cooperation. And you can't get saved without God's cooperation. Why? Why? Because you are co-laborers together. You are joined together. Amen? And so you can see, when you read the Bible, see, this is where people, oh, see, that see, that was a mistake. That was a mistake. It said God did it. Then it said Moses did it. That was a mistake. Oh, it says that God saves us. Then it says man saves himself. See, mistakes all through the Bible. No. You're just reading one part. That's like reading all four Gospels and saying, see, four different stories. They can't even get their stories straight. And it was all put in the Bible. No, there are, there are stories, and some stories are very general. And then other stories are very specific. And if you look at the, you can get the general idea, and then you get the specific idea. And you can see, and some are more specific than others. You look at the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of Luke is more specific gospel than any of the other three. Right? Why? Because... God used Luke, who was in his day originally a doctor who was very detail-oriented, right? Because doctors weren't just doctors. They were also scribes, and they were the educated person in the town, basically. And so they kept detailed records. And so God used Luke to give a detailed record. Luke is the most detailed gospel. Now, now John, totally different. And there are things in John, and if you take Matthew, Mark, and Luke, it's called the Synoptic Gospels, and the three stories run pretty much, you know, together. And then John comes from a totally different perspective. And there's things that are in John that are not in the other Gospels. And so people say, well, see, they can't even get the stories right. No, it's looking, it's why was it written? And to whom was it written to? That's, I know it's redundant, but okay. <clears throat> so... You have to look at what is being said. But there is not one mistake in the Bible. Now, I'm not saying in the King James. King James uses wrong, wrong words at times, that kind of stuff. When you get back to the original Greek, original Aramaic, I'm telling you, there's no mistakes. And, and it, that's how trustworthy God is. And you can see the details that some left out. Why? Because some of the details weren't important. And why? Because they'd already been written by another man. Why, why write the details twice? You see? So, now... He goes on, it says, he divided the sea, but yet it said Moses did it. Here it says God did it and caused them to pass through. And he made the waters to stand as a heap again. Now watch. And in the daytime, 
Also, he led them with a cloud and all the night with a light of fire. He claved the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink as out of the great depths. Notice he said, God, God did this. Okay. He brought streams out of the rock and caused waters to run down like rivers. And they sinned yet more against him by provoking the most high in the wilderness. And they tempted God in their heart by asking meat for their lust. Yea, they spoke against God and said, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Notice that was tempting. When you start saying, can God fix this? Can God actually help me in this? You're actually provoking him. Behold, he smote the rock that the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide flesh for his people? Notice God smote the rock. Isn't that right? And yet Moses smote the rock. But it said God smote the rock. Now think about this, because if you look at it later, God did smite the rock. Why? Because he put on him our punishment. So everything this says is exactly accurate, even though it can attribute things to different things. 